or two talking about the dangers or the harm that dairy products can cause through human consumption. This video is along that same line and uh, again if you don't want to listen or watch this video you can turn it off uh, that's your prerogative you have a right to do anything that you want to virtually but for those that are curious for those who would like some knowledge and some applied knowledge if you will and who indeed care about their health and welfare and that of their families you may just want to stay just for a moment I'm just sort of going to scave the top of this subject again and I'm going to leave a couple of links uh, below so that you can follow up and that you can also listen to some doctors talking about the dangers of dairy. Now here's brother teacher's take. First of all let me preface this video by saying this. When I was a child, my brother and I, we grew up drinking milk. We grew up eating cereal in the morning, sometimes in the evening. But anyway, uh, we, we ate ice cream, uh, uh, ice cream pops, fudge sickles, and things of this sort, cakes and cookies and pies my mother used, uh, prepared with dairy, with milk. We drank ice cold glasses of milk in the summertime and we enjoyed milk even yogurt milk based products period ice cream and so forth and you know uh, when I had my children I fed my children milk I gave them milk for their cereal and they had ice cream growing up as well and dairy uh, based products as it were now now that I'm older and somewhere around my mid to late 20s I began to question a lot of the things that we did customarily and traditionally as human beings not just people of color if you will black folks or what have you one of the greatest lessons that I've learned in my life coming up from a child to this present as I'm speaking to you is to challenge everything. Challenge everything that you're told, everything that you see, everything that people try to enforce to you as being the truth. Because someone says it doesn't make it the truth. Just because you watch or observe someone doing it doesn't mean that it's beneficial doesn't mean that it's good for you doesn't mean that it is right or even just depending on what it is so this particular topic of milk I want to lay down some fundamental things for you first of all every mammal that I know of there might be uh, a minuscule amount of animals out there that might be mammals that may not have this particular habit. This might not be uh, in their DNA. They probably don't have it in their species. But I personally, as I'm speaking to you, don't know of any. Maybe the duck-billed platypus, who knows? Might be an exception to this. But every mammal that has a baby, nurtures that baby, feeds that baby, their milk. Human beings are no different. I know technology, convenience has created formula for the mothers out of convenience for the most part, busy schedules and so forth because of the past 30-40 years how the world has changed and a lot of moms on the go don't have time or they say they don't have time to breastfeed that's perhaps another topic but let's say you are breastfeeding your child you are a human being a female you're breastfeeding your 
human child, human milk that came from you, your paps, you know, from your breast, your mammary glands, ladies. Now, that milk was intended for a baby, a human baby, just as a cow's milk. Stay with me for a moment. A cow's milk was intended for its calf. A gorilla's milk is intended for its baby gorilla baby. A dog's milk, a cat's milk, a lion's milk, a tiger's milk, a kangaroo's milk is intended for its respective species. To include goat, sheep, monkeys, whatever. Elephants, giraffes, zebra, deer, gazelles. Why are we drinking another species milk? Okay, human beings should drink human milk when we're babies, being nurtured. Okay, uh, gorillas should drink gorillas milk, goats should drink goat milk, cows should drink cow milk, elephants should drink their mama elephants milk. Okay kind of rough getting to that point but anyway whatever your species is or whatever the species is that milk was intended for that specific excuse me that specific or particular species because none of these milks are the same should I say this again there's a distinct difference in a dog a domestic dog and a cow, and a horse, and a kangaroo, and an orangutan, an elephant, a zebra, a hippopotamus, and a human being. If you were to extract milk from all of the species that I just mentioned, they would be similar, but not the same. Hence, the different species. So a cow's milk was designed genetically for a cow. It has everything the baby cow needs to grow and to flourish. The same is true for an elephant. An elephant's milk was designed as catered for a baby elephant, not for a cow. And the same is true for the tiger. A tiger's milk was designed for a baby tiger not a cat that you might see on your block same thing is true for hippopotamus a hippopotamus milk was designed for a baby hippopotamus not for a deer they're all genetically different need I mention the human being so why don't we drink all of these other animals that I just mentioned outside of the cow? Why don't we drink all of their milk? It's because we're creatures of habit. We're just accustomed to cow's milk for the most part. It's only been in recent decades that people in America have leaned towards maybe goat's milk or goat cheese. That hasn't been that way that long. But other countries, it's pretty much of a staple they drink goat's milk along with cow's milk and so forth but fast forward to right now the way in which cow's milk or dairy is processed in America and the world makes it harmful for, hum for human consumption I've said this before I'm gonna say it again first of all when milk is pasteurized and you're gonna see that stamped on every container of milk pasteurized what does that mean it means that it has been cooked heated and when it had any form of nutrition in it for the baby cow that is once it was extracted from the mom that milk was heated all of the nutrition is now gone secondly on that same note 
if you go to the grocery store or the supermarket and you see milk it's going to say with calcium fortified with calcium fortified with vitamin D that means somebody added something that wasn't there so where do you get the vitamin D from and the calcium in the milk from and anything else that you might think is going to be beneficial to the consumer where do you get it from ladies and gentlemen can we say the laboratory it's not the real thing it's synthetic anything synthetic not supposed to be in here okay now another thing about the milk that you see if you read it carefully it will say homogenized what is homogenized homogenization that is when milk when it comes from a mother cow has clumps or globules of fat when it's homogenized it's put in a centrifuge and it's spun at an extremely fast speed to break down the fat molecules so that when you and I see it in the grocery store it's liquid no clumps of fat okay homogenized but I'll have you to know that it was there before it got to the grocery shelf the refrigerator another thing because milk is such a staple in America and across the world for them to keep up with the supply or the demand through the supply that means that the dairy cows have to undergo some very strenuous and harsh treatment they have to get it to the market the milk that is they have the cows producing more milk than they're naturally supposed to produce by giving them hormones and when the cows get sick they give the cows antibiotics so just those two things I'm going to mention right now hormones given to a dairy cow to get it to produce more milk than it normally would under ordinary circumstances coupled with the fact that they have all of these cows in this compound like a prison huddled up on top of each other so they can get out more and more and more milk product to ship across the world not just to the United States but across the world to restaurants and grocery stores ice cream parlors dairies so they mistreat the cattle to get this done because it's all about the money it's all about the Benjamins as they say so I said that they give them hormones to get more milk out of them okay need I also not lead out excuse me leave out the fact that these cows become very very ill because they're overworked so to speak so they give them what antibiotics now backing up a little bit a couple moments ago those two things hormones and where can we say estrogen and also antibiotics so when the milk gets to or the milk product gets to the grocery store who's consuming this milk product that's laden with hormones and antibiotics they're going into our bodies do you think without any backlash do you think the milk that we drink from the grocery store or the supermarket is not going to cause any ill effects down the road because of the antibiotics and the hormones just to mention two not to mention the pus that's in the milk as well that you can't see do you think so not to mention the fact that when we are babies 
and we're drinking our mother's milk, I'm talking about human beings right now, when we're babies and we're drinking our mother's milk, there is a protein called lactose or sugar called lactose in cow's milk. Okay? And in mother's milk, there's lactose as well. So, the baby has a protein called lactate or lactase. So, when the baby is drinking mom's milk, that lactase breaks down the sugar that's in the lactose. Okay? Now, once that baby is weaned from his mom's milk, lactase is no longer needed. So it goes away. Do you know where I'm heading with this? So if you consume milk after you have no more lactase, you become what? Lactose intolerant. In means not, not tolerant. You cannot tolerate lactose because you don't have lactase to break it down because you're not what? A baby any longer. So why are we drinking milk? That's why you get gas, irritable bowel syndrome, cramping, and various other conditions associated with drinking dairy products. There are no unique human beings that are good at drinking milk and everyone else is not. In other words, we are all lactose intolerant because we all don't have what lactase anymore to break down the sugar in the lactose not to mention we're no longer drinking our mom's milk human mother's milk but we're drinking other animals milk that was intended for that species alone just because we think we can just because it may taste good or it's palatable to us everything that tastes good doesn't mean that it's good for us okay so I know I was beating around a little bit kind of getting caught up a little bit there are other videos that I want to do here soon but I just wanted to touch base on the subject of milk consumption for human beings again we're not supposed to be drinking milk because it has no nutritional benefit for us period and most human babies or a significant amount of human babies are not even drinking mom's milk anymore they're drinking Similac and Isomil and all these other various formulas note that I said formulas what in the heck is a formula something made in the laboratory again if it didn't come from your mom her laboratory then you need to give it some consideration because no one can do better than nature look at the links that I've left below and see what Dr. Milton says you will be encouraged some might be frustrated but I, as they used to say in church it's the truth anyhow see you later brother teacher out